What's up travelers? This video is going to be a short comparison between Sanganomiya Kokomi and The Wanderer, aka Scaramouche, from the perspective of a new player. So just to clarify, uh, I'm not a new player, I'm actually AR60, but this video is done from the perspective of a new player. So if you are a new player and you're wondering which of these characters to pick, then you're in the right place. So let's do Kokomi first. Here is an overview of why you may want to pick her over The Wanderer. So, jumping right in. Number one, the fact that she is a healer will make your life as a new player a whole lot easier. The bosses in this game, especially the first time story bosses, are going to be quite challenging. And if you don't have a good healer, you're going to find yourself relying on food a lot. And that is, of course, not a position you want to be in. Of course, one thing you could try to do is freeze your enemies, which brings us to number two. Kokomi is a Hydro character, which will unlock the ability for you to freeze any enemies you might fight. Except bosses, of course, but that's when her healing comes in. So Kokomi's very good Hydro application via her Jellyfish or Elemental skill, plus pretty much any Cryo character, means that any non-boss enemies are going to be frozen solid while you slap them around. Which brings us to her third pro. She can do quite a bit of damage with her burst because it gives her an attack bonus based on her HP. And since her healing is also based on her HP, this means that you can basically stack HP on Kokomi and increase both her healing and damage capabilities at the same time. What this means is that for early and mid game, you can use Kokomi as both your healer and your primary damage dealer, and then by late game you can transition her to a support role, for which she is mostly intended. That gives her an amazing deal of versatility, especially for new players. Somewhat related to her damage capabilities is number 4, the fact that she has a minus 100% crit rate. So you're obviously thinking, how can this possibly be a good thing? Well, I lied, sort of. On the surface, I mean, it, it can't really be a good thing, right? It's just purely a negative. But what it implies is that Kokomi is not reliant on crit to do damage. And crit stats are very hard to get early in the game. So conveniently, the thing that helps you do more damage, which is really hard to get early game, is something that Kokomi doesn't need. All you need for Kokomi to do more damage is HP and maybe to a lesser extent attack and healing bonus. Because later on her healing bonus actually increases her damage as well. So yeah, you can probably see by now her... Versatility is absolutely unparalleled in the entire game. And to top it all off, number 5 is that Kokomi is very easy to gear, at least in terms of weapons. In fact, her best in slot weapon, the best weapon for her in the entire game is actually a 3 star catalyst, Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers. The reason is because this catalyst gives you HP as a subset, which Kokomi needs, and the fact that it gives a massive attack bonus to the next character that you switch into which combined together make this weapon absolutely perfect for a support style Kokomi, while still being pretty good for a damage dealing Kokomi since she gets damage from HP. So there are all the reasons you may want to choose Kokomi over the Wanderer as your 5 star character in this patch. But we will go over some caveats as well. So number one, Kokomi's ascension mats are in Inazuma, and pretty deep in Inazuma as a matter of fact. So if you are a new player, it might be a little while before you're able to, well, reach that point in the story. Which means your Kokomi is going to be stuck at character level 40, or ascension 1, before you get there. Now this isn't a huge deal, especially if you only use Kokomi as a healer, because she can function quite well even at level 40. Besides, you can get there as early as Adventure Rank 28, uh, because that's the level you need to be to get to Inazuma. So it's not a huge deal, but still something worth considering as a new player. Kokomi's second caveat is, of course, the fact that she has minus 100% crit rate, so she can't take advantage of crit at all. But then again, once you're at endgame, you should probably have a dedicated damage dealing character, uh, instead of still using Kokomi as your main damage dealer. And even if you do want to use Kokomi as a dedicated damage dealer during late game, her damage bonus is going to be just fine due to all the bonuses she gets from HP and healing bonus in addition to whatever attack she might have. So again, especially for Kokomi's intended role, this isn't too big of a drawback. Another glaring issue plaguing Kokomi is the fact that she isn't actually a fish. Wait! You look kinda like a mermaid! Are there fish in your family? Oh, uh, sorry to disappoint you, Miss Mage, but I'm just an ordinary human. 
Yeah, she's actually just a human with a fishtail-like dress or something. Okay, now let's move on to the Wanderer. Why might you want to pull him instead of Kokimi for your 5-star character in patch 3.8? Well, first and foremost, he can fly. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty big one. So this not only means that you can stay out of reach of melee enemies, but it also means that you can hover across rivers and also fly up mountains. Super useful for exploration, and also obviously super fun to play around with. Another reason he's really good for exploration is the fact that he's an Animo character, which grants you Animo Resonance. This is basically the best resonance to have for exploration because it reduces your stamina consumption, and increases your movement speed, and reduces your cooldown on elemental skills. So if you have characters like Sayu or Yelan, whose elemental skills help you get around, then that is yet another boost that Animo Resonance provides you. So with the Wanderer in your team, you only need one other Animo character to activate this, and ideally you would want maybe Sayu for exploration, or maybe someone like Kazuha or Venti, but if you don't have any of those characters, Animo Traveler will work just fine. Reason 3 you might want to go for the Wanderer is because of his versatility in terms of teams, not in terms of just himself. So he can't also heal while doing damage like Kokimi, but he can work with a very diverse array of team members. Basically, all you need are a few characters that can do damage from off-field, such as Kaya or Lisa or Shangling, and after activating their respective abilities, you just swap to the Wanderer and you spam his normal attacks and charged attacks, with an elemental burst thrown in whenever it's up, or whenever you feel like it. All in all, a very simple and very fun playstyle. The final nice thing about the Wanderer is... his hat. Yeah. I mean, that's a big hat. I'd like that hat. Wouldn't you? In all seriousness, I do think it's kind of nice to look at. And if you're going to be playing a character, you're going to be looking at them a whole lot. So depending on whether or not you like big hats, that might genuinely be a plus. Now, of course, the Wanderer does have his caveats compared to Kokomi. Like I said, he is not a healer like Kokomi is, so he's not going to make boss encounters that much easier for you, unless you can somehow manage to um, burn them down before they can hit you, but probably not likely as a new player. So you will have to resort to either using food or Barbara or something like that. Another issue with the Wanderer is his lack of weapon choices. So aside from his best-in-slot 5-star weapon, which I definitely recommend new players avoid going for, or any other weapon banner for that matter, the Wanderer doesn't have a lot of weapon choices. In fact, his best 4-star weapons are the Witsith, which you can only get from the weapon banner, and Dodoko Tails, which you can't obtain anymore if you don't already have it, since it was given out during Klee's summer quest back in 2021. Yeah. So, starting out as the Wanderer, your best choices for weapons might be something like Emerald Orb or Mapa Mare, which aren't really that great. So yeah, if you pick the Wanderer, you're going to have a much harder time getting him a decent weapon than if you pick Kokomi. So that just about wraps things up. I did try to cover all the important stuff while keeping this video under 10 minutes. And as a final verdict, I would say that most new players would probably be better served going for Sangonomiya Kokomi. Because despite being first released almost two years ago during patch 2.1, she is still such a unique and irreplaceable character due to the fact that she is an extremely good healer and also really good at applying Hydro to enemies. Plus the fact that she is a very serviceable damage dealer, especially during early to mid game. And while the Wanderer is really cool and nifty, especially since he has a big hat and he can fly, I'd still say Kokomi offers more long term value for your account as a whole. Plus the fact that there are other Animo characters out there, such as Venti or Kazaha, and especially Sayu, who will help your exploration out far more than the Wanderer would. Although it should be noted that while Kazaha and Venti will help you go up, and Sayu will help you go forward, the Wanderer can do sort of a little bit of everything, just maybe not as fast and still while consuming stamina. So there you have it folks, that's my comparison of Kokomi versus the Wanderer from the perspective of a new player. If you have any thoughts to share, if you thought I missed something, or if you disagreed with anything, then be sure to leave a comment, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Oh, and make sure you check out my Genshin Hardcore Iron Man runs when you have the chance. But for now, I will see you folks in the next video.